All right, let's do a grass cutting video today. It's November, all the leaves are down, the grass is a little high. Let's try to get it one more cut before winter time. All right, let's get this baby started up. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. A flat tire? Oh, these caster wheels are a pain in the butt. And this one's low also. Jeez, every stinking time with these mowers, every time you want to cut with these zero turns, these front wheels are, are flat. Figures, we got to do something about this. These new mowers are all coming out with these fabricated decks now, these all welded decks. That's the new thing instead of a stamped deck. It holds up better, but it's so much heavier. These, we these things weigh so much nowadays that they can't put the normal little caster wheels on the front of these things. Like a normal size used to be like a 10 by 5 on these. But because of all this weight, if you had those little wheels on the front, it'd be like pushing a, a shopping cart full of groceries through your lawn. The front wheels would just dig into the ground. So they had to put these big, flat, wider tires on here. But the problem is when you're making your turns with these things, they just... They just want to peel off the rim. I, I never see nails or anything in any of my tires. I never had a flat tire in the back. It's these front wheels that always go bad. And this one right here, you can see it actually peeled off the rim when I made a turn. And it peeled off the rim and it also pulled the stem right out of the hole there. So the stem is either broke off or it's inside. So this, this is useless. This tire is, is useless. These tires now that they put on here, let me show you. If you can see right here, are 11 by six. So it's 11 by six across here. And I wanted to get the no flat tires for these things. The solid rubber ones, the no flat tires. They're very hard to find in that size, the 11 by six. I was on a waiting list for like two months, maybe even three months, waiting for them to come in. You may be able to find them, but most of the ones I found don't come with the race and the bearings inside the hubs. They're cheaper, and they just give you the regular wheel and the rim with none of the guts on the inside. So if you wanted a, a complete assembly that you could just put right into here, um, the only company I found that made them is Bad Boy. Bad boy mowers. So I actually have some 11 by six. These things are heavy. Wow. These things probably weigh three times as much as that wheel right there, this pneumatic wheel, these solid rubber ones. But you can see how it has the bearings inside on both sides and there's sealed bearing. There's no zerk to grease these things, which I guess if you were really mechanical you could drill a hole there and put your own grease fitting on there maybe i don't know but i'm not worried about it these things are expensive these tires for a set of these cost me 230 dollars for two tires but that's with the bearings in there so 230 dollars for these tires but to me it's worth it because you can see my little fake intro that i did to this video every time i go to cut grass I got flat tires. I've got to fill these up. So I'm going to change these things and put solid wheels on the zero turn instead of the pneumatic. So let's get started on that. Now these are three quarter. I just got three quarter inch wrench here. Okay. And you could see this old tire, you had to fill it up with air right here, which was a pain in the butt, even trying to get air and air hose onto this so close to the hub here. 11 by six, 11 by six. So technically it should be able to go right on there. Oh, we can see our first problem. The bolt that comes with it is a half inch bolt. The bolt that comes with the new tires is bigger. That's a five ace. And this hole is a half inch hole. 
So we're going to have to get new bolts and we're going to have to drill this hole out to a 5 8 inch hole. You're not going to be able to find these 11 by 6s with a half inch hub. I don't believe. I couldn't find any. So if you go up to a solid, because they're so heavy, if you go up to a solid um, 11 by 6, it's going to have 5 8 inch hole here. And you're going to have to make sure that your hole on your bracket is 5 8 also. So let's get some new bolts. Alright, I went to the store and I bought some new bolts here. 5 8 inch, these are a little bit longer, these are inch longer than that because that's all the store had. But these are hardened bolts. You can see because they got that yellow gold look to them. You can't just buy normal bolts. They got to be this yellow hardened steel bolt. Um, they're more expensive than a normal bolt. Between the nut and the bolt, this thing cost me $10. So $10 a piece, that's $20 for these bolts. But you, you need that hardened steel, I think, because the bouncing of that wheel, if this was just a regular bolt, it would probably bend or something. And you can see this 5 8 slides in there perfectly but there's no way that's going in there so we have to drill this out all right the second setback I didn't have a drill bit big enough to make this hole I didn't have a 5 ace or even one bigger than a half inch so I had to go to the store and buy this step drill bit and this thing was $40 for this thing. So we'll see if it can make it through this. I don't think this is any kind of hardened steel. So it should be all right. And I just got to be careful how deep I go into this. This step drill bit goes up to 7 8 on here. The biggest one is 7 8 I have to stop, I guess, about the middle of it. It has a number on here, if you can see that. 5 ace is kind of in the middle so i just got to be careful I'll, I'll try to i'll try to slide this bolt in periodically let's see how this goes wow that was very very easy i i didn't even push I didn't even have to push. And it's almost a 5 ace. I can see the number right there. Actually, let me show you that. So you can see, well, I wet it right now, but you can see the the five ace on there. Well, I can still see it. I can still see it. Now, you can see the steps that it made inside here. So I'm wondering if somehow I got to come in from the other side because this is this is thicker than the than the steps on the drill bit. But let's see if that even. Yeah, see, it goes in. It goes in from this side, but it's getting stopped. It's getting stopped on that other side. I don't know if I can get this. Yeah, there's no way to. I should have grabbed the 5 ace drill bit. Once I made this hole, I could have finished it the rest of the way. But it's just a tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit. I'm going to go for it. You can see the next step is just starting, but the 5 ace hasn't finished yet. Look at that. Just a tiny, tiny bit. 
or just finish it. Got the bolts through. And with the step bit, like I said, it the steps on here are smaller than the width of this. So I had to go, the outside of the hole was bigger than 5 eighths. The inside was 5 eighths. So it probably been smarter to start it all the way up to the step with 5 eighths and then finish it with a regular 5 eighths drill bit. But there's no, there's really no play in there, even with that, so, so it worked. Because this bolt is so much longer, I don't want the extra to be hanging out where it might catch onto a fence or something. So I'm gonna feed the bolt through from the outside to the inside. Like I said, these, these things are stinking heavy. Yeah, you can see how much that sticks off right there. And even with this bolt, the bolt is so much bigger than on the other ones. Now, yeah, three quarters is now way too small. The old ones were, the half inch had three quarter inch bolts on it. So this is bigger, we gotta go get new ones. So the bolt and the nut on the new one is a, uh, is a 1516. It's pretty tight. If you can see down in there, see that space? I tighten that as far as I can with the depth of the socket. There is a little gap in there. Let's see it that way. Let's see that little bit of a gap. I could get a wrench. Yeah, it's got a it's got a little jiggle, so we have to get a regular wrench because I don't have a deep socket to finish the rest of the way. So I'm just gonna hold this side here and crank the other side. See, you tighten it and then the wheel don't turn. So don't tighten it all the way. Look at that. And I kind of like these tires anyway because see how they're, they have a rounded edge on it compared to the old ones that are just flat. They're like a really flat tire and this has some roundness to it. All right, let's get this other one on. Again, like we learned from that first tire, you don't have to crank it all the way and close this gap. If you squeeze this bracket against the tire, it doesn't turn. And these, these bolts that I bought have the plastic on the inside of the bolt so it doesn't back off without needing a lock washer. Just enough. And you can see this is an 11 by six and look how much clearance it has up here. You can't go any bigger than that. Now I looked all around this tire for some place where it would say 11 by six but it doesn't say it anywhere on it. The only thing on this tire is this word here, it says premium. So you're just gonna have to remember that you've got an 11 by six on there. But once you put once you put these on there, I guess the only thing that could go bad is maybe the, um, the bearings inside there, but I'm guessing it's gonna last just as long as the mower, mower does. It does look a little hoopty with the bad boy orange on the red Toro mower, 
but I would gladly take those solid rubber tires over having to put air in them every time I cut it. Um, this is the just the residential mower. It's the Toro. I think it's called a Time Cutter 5000 or something like that. It's a 50 inch cut. But um, I think the I think the transmission on the rears could have been a little bit better because it kind of drags when I'm going around trees and doing my trimming it. Like and so well, everything's covered in leaves. But every time I go around something, if I'm not really pulling that handle back and forth, the wheel drag and it makes divots. I've got divots around every stinking every tree in the back back there that I have to mow around. Like when I'm doing trimming with it, this it's not as responsive as my other one. Let's see how it cuts here. We'll, we'll, I'll run it over this area here with the leaves and the grass, and we'll see. Because what I can tell you with solid tires, because I put solid ones on my smaller mower, is it bounces a lot harder right now. So if you have a bad back or a bad neck, you're really going to get bounced around because it doesn't have any suspension in it, no air ride seat. So if you're if you're cruising along, these solid tires make it a lot more bouncy. So that's something to think about before you put these on. do some figure eights with the mower right here and I want you to watch those front wheels when I turn them handle those wheels turn instantly unlike the factory ones the pneumatic tires that are kind of flat all the way around when you turn with them it, it always felt like especially if you didn't have the correct air pressure it felt like it was digging into the dirt before it would catch and make its turns but with this this rounded solid tire it's it's turns it feels so much better I don't know if it's me because I've just spent so much money or if it really does work but just take a look and watch me just ride around right here and make your own judgment but to me it, it feels like it definitely has made a difference all right check this out All right, you can see that. Now look at what the back wheels did. That was the back wheels. Like, I, I don't think that the transmission or the rears in this, this regular homeowner, homeowner mower are that good. They're not really responsive enough to instantly forward and reverse. It kind of drags. You really got to go all the way extended or all the way back to get the wheels to actually, it might need adjustment, but I've looked under the owner's manual on this particular mower some have a bolt that you can adjust the rear the the um the steering on this this has nothing i can't find anything to adjust the steering on this thing the handles are maxed out there's a bolt on the handle so you can use the full range of your handles i've got that maxed out but nothing for the rear so i, I get these i get these divots from this mower let me show you over here since it doesn't really have anything to do with these no flat tires but if you can see around all my trees look look at this this particular mower does this look look at this one in the shade you probably could see it better but see how to as i go around my trees here the back wheel drags and this is the this is the only mower that's done this to me i've had a quite a few different mowers but this particular one like I said I don't know if it's the rears just the transmission in the two rears are good enough or 
or need to be adjusted. I don't know. But this is the video. The bad boy 11 by 6 solids, flat free tires on the Toro Time Cutter 50 inch. That has the Kawasaki engine on it, by the way. And so does my other mower. These, these Kawasaki engines are, man, you can cut. Well, you've seen them in other videos. I can cut farm grass in the pastures almost waist high with these things. But that's it. Just know that you're going to have to drill your holes in the front to 5 eighths and get a new 5 eighths inch bolt. And you're good to go. Thanks for watching.